Hello, Steve. Hello, Jill. It's time to game classy. Yep, there we go. Yep. Yep, there we go. So, uh, yeah, you know, you going to go back to vaping. <laughs> Vape niche? <laughs> oh, vaping. I played, I, a, I played a game of Age of Sigmar in second edition. Did you? How was it? How did it go? Oh, it was good. Yeah? yeah. What would you play with? Your, your Nurgleman? Uh, yep, I did uh, uh, 2,000 points, uh, Nurgle versus Cast Wars. Ah, and it worked out well. Yep, uh, I ended up losing by a small margin because the board was longboard deployment, Ew. which longboard with slow ass fucking Nurgle against a gunline cast or army. <laughs> oh, that's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> it was bad. Did uh, how did the contagion points work out for you? Uh, really good. I ended up summoning a total of three trees and a unit of twenty plague bearers. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, that's really good. So I think I'm probably going to try and make a list to game maximum summoning. That's what I was thinking. Is like. Uh, when I was looking through, because I was I was texting you about that with the corn guys, because I'm thinking I'm actually going to do a corn army. Okay. I was like, I have all these corn figures because I had four Age of Sigmar starter sets that just happened to fall in my lap. Not even I didn't even want them. Most of them, I, I did just kind of were like people were like, hey, you play Age of Sigmar here, take these models that I don't want. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I have a ton of um, the Blood Warriors and the Blood Reavers, and I was like, oh, cool, you know. So maybe I was thinking. Do I and I texted you about that? Do I do a block of thirty reavers or do I do um, three units of ten reavers? Mm. The point cost is the same. You're not getting a point break, right? Right. Um, but with the ten man, you could do some damage, and if your unit gets wiped, you get a blood tide point. Or a yeah, because it's just when a unit first. dies, right? Yeah. And so a unit has to get wiped in order for it to happen. So if you do the full block of thirty, it has a tiny bit more staying power. Uh, well, not a tiny bit. It has a lot more staying power, but you don't get those blood tide points, which you can use to summon um, the uh, um, um, like a uh, uh, bl- blood letters. And the blood letters are you. You only need two blood tide points to summon five, so four to summon ten, and that's pretty fucking good right there. Yep, especially because summoned units will generate more blood tide points. Exactly. When they die. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's that's fucking badass. So it's like I'm, so putting it together. The only bad thing is is that with the blades of corn army. Um, you, you, you're a little bit limited in what you could put into your army for your, well, I shouldn't say that you actually have a lot of choice when it comes to your, your core units that you have to put in your army. Um, but the problem is, is that you're split between mortal and demon and you don't really want to mix because you have to put in a demon character in order to get demon bonuses and you have to have mortal characters in order to get the mortal bonuses. So you should really go one or the other. So. I don't know. The, the, the trick to that is, is you use a mighty lord of corn on a skull crusher because he has the keyword demon and mortal. Ooh, on the skull crusher. Yes. I think I actually have. Well, no, I don't. I have an old metal juggernaut and those look really dumb in yeah. comparison. You, you, need, you need a mighty lord of corn on a skull crusher because he has both keywords. Because the all of the heroes, all of the, uh, all of the chaos lords on demonic mounts. For every one of the factions, that's that's what they have. Ah. So the Nurgle Harbinger of Decay, he's got that where he's immortal and demon. The Skull Crusher, uh, the Slanesh and the Booby Snakes got it, and then um, Zinch on Disc has it. Ba-da-na-na. So now you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my plan is I'm gonna try uh, the 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 list I'm gonna try is gonna be um, uh, Horticulus Slimix. Slimix. Yeah. I'm gonna use him uh, and his uh, battalion. Because what his battalion does is, so he has the ability where once per game he can grow a tree for no points. I'm growing a tree right now. Yeah, for no points. For no points. Uh, and then his battalion lets you do it every turn, and you can do it instead of just within three inches of him. You can do it within three inches of anything in his battalion. Oh. So my idea is, I'm going to take him five beasts of Nurgle, a unit of six uh, Nurglings, and then Morbidex Twiceborn, the maggot Magoth Rider, because Ma- his ability is once per turn for free, you can just add a stand of Nurglings to a unit. Yeah. So I'm going to grow the Nurgling unit repeatedly and then just do a tree, and just I'll have, I'll have Horticulus Slimix literally in a corner, and I'm going to have him build a little tree farm to just generate contagion points and just start dropping great and clean ones. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, hopefully that works. I, I mean, it's... So I didn't realize how effective it would be, but it's actually kind of insane, because... You can so in that list specifically, it'll be nuts because I got once I got to three trees, 
I was starting to generate a lot of points. So if I have if I have Slimex in the corner and have him grow his tree for free, I you start the game with a tree for free. So I have him grow his tree for free. Then you can spend seven points, which you'll likely get on the first turn, to grow another tree. Then you're have then the then in turn two you will have four plus three d three points, guaranteed. So then you get to grow another tree, in turn two. And then summon another tree, so you'll have five trees. So then turn three going forward, you will have four plus five D3 points. Uh, so that's nine on the minimum. Uh, wait, five D3, that's 15. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's yeah. 19. And, and so how many does it cost uh, for a... Uh, great and clean one is 28 points. Oh, uh, so it's going to be a little uh, difficult to do on turn three. But... Right, but I, you can still summon... You can still you can summon more than one thing, so if you, yeah, like... Yeah, of course, in, yeah. In the second turn, if you get a big roll on your D3s and you get, like, 14 contagion points, that's two trees. Then if you add a Horticulous ability, that's three trees. Yeah, but then you have to sit there and put together and paint all those trees. Uh, well, see, so what I did is I have four of the official model, and then I bought a Citadel Wood, <laughs> and I'm going to trace the base of of the of the official model and i'm going to use citadel wood trees for the rest of them uh, okay so at the end i'm probably going to have a total of 10 trees okay well, it's not as cool but you know what also but it's also not as annoying it's it yes uh, i wouldn't actually mind if there were any sort of options on those trees whatsoever nope there are none Maybe you can go to the fish store and buy it like you like the it on the Deepkin uh, toot toot boat. That boat is fucking sweet. No, it's, it's not. Huge it's and dumb. awesome. It's super dumb. No, that boat's sweet. It's 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 super good. No, nah, it's dumb. It's, no, it's, it's super dumb. good. No, well, it's super good. Okay, yes, it's super good in the game, but it's super dumb looking. It's oh, dumb. I, I mean, it looks like exactly what's supposed to be a ghostly shipwreck, <laughs> and <laughs> it's fucking huge. I didn't realize how big it was until it's I saw big, it. I was yeah. like, that thing is fucking massive. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, that's also a, that's actually an interesting piece of terrain because the way it's designed and built is like you actually can't substitute it uh, efficiently because it's broken into two spots. So you can either summon it as one big thing or two little things. So trying to replicate that one is going to be a lot harder. Yeah, well then you'd have to play the deepkin, and uh, I don't like those models so. Uh, I, the, I find the for me the deepkin are a mix of models I very very much like and then models I very very much dislike. I find them shallow and pedantic, Steve. I, I love the fucking shanktopus, like shanktopus. the fucking octopus with a knife is fucking awesome. Knife topus. Uh, I really like I like their character models a lot. I like all the fish. Yeah. Uh, well, you're a fish guy. You like fish. I do like fish. Yeah, that's the thing. Is you actually like having fish? It's not my thing. Not not my thing at all, Steve. See. So then there you go. So you do, do, but if you like a lizard, maybe perhaps you'd prefer the seraphon. <laughs> the lizardman. Uh, they're, the lizardman. They're currently, I think the, uh, I think they're the contender for the first errata for summoning. Oh, for the skink, the uh, skink horde. Well, because you take, so you take uh, a slot, the great, the the highest tier slon where he gets three spells, and then you take uh, four of the four or five of the little banner bears that give you an extra uh, spell thing or a summoning point. So. Every turn, you don't cast a spell with the Slan. You don't cast any spells. You get a Bastilladon for free. And then you have extra points. So turn one, you get a Bastilladon. Turn two, you get a Bastilladon plus. Then turn three, you get a Bastilladon plus. Then turn four, you get a Bastilladon plus. Like, by just not casting spells. So I think they're going to be the first one to have a Rata for summoning. It might. I mean, I don't know. If you, if you don't cast that early and that often in the game, it might hurt you in the long run. A free 200-point model a turn, and that's one that's arguably the best model in the game. Wow. <laughs> But I'm just you know, if you're targeted, you can get your ass handed to you pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I have to see because because Slan are like also really hard to kill. They are very hard to kill. Um, let's get away from uh, Warhammer for a little bit because we've been talking about Warhammer for the last like six weeks. It's all um, that matters. Yeah. <laughs> um. So um. The big news outside of that is uh. Chris Fitzpatrick is releasing new models for War Gods of of uh, Olympus. Uh, it is War Gods of Egyptus, I believe. No, or, or, no, uh, no. It's, 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 no, it's just called War Gods now. Okay. Because they've they've merged. They've both. merged the worlds. Yes. They've oh merged my, the world. Was there some sort of cataclysmic event that merged the War Gods of Egyptus yeah. and the War Gods so, of so Olympus? You, so you can have your Cyclopses. Cyclopses. You know, those are they released two giants. I. Your use at best is like, who the hell is still buying these models? I, like I said, I think I I hold out hope that it's just a bunch of groups all playing Al <laughs> Um, you know, there's a lot of guys who, uh, especially older guys who do more pulpy games who probably use a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, the models are fine. Like I like those Cyclops models. They're, oh yeah, his, they're nice. It's Chris Fitzpatrick. If you have, if you like liked his models that he did for 6th edition fantasy, you'll like what he's doing with his own range. Yeah. I mean, it's the exact same thing. And I really like his alligator man. 
Is the alligator made the Sobeki? Yeah. They're really cool. The little, I have a bunch of those guys. I like those. Those are pretty cool. They're cool yeah. models. Yeah. I, I don't know what I would do with them, but they're cool. Yeah. Actually, I was, uh, for the, the 3D printer I've been playing with it, I saw a ton of Egyptian terrain. And I was thinking about you with that. Making a Tomb King's army? <laughs> I, I do have a Tomb King's army at home, and I'm like, oh, man. But I was just thinking, I was thinking about all the the the... Uh, the pyramids and every all that other shit and everything else. I'm still holding out hope that they re bring the they bring the Tomb Kings back as like a construct focused army. They should they should bring it back as a construct a construct focused army for the undead. Yeah, it's it's right. Or it's so easy too because death. you have because you have you just take the you just make a plastic Ushabti kit. You bring back the Sphinx kit. You make a plastic Scorpion kit. You have the Snake Riders and you have the Tomb Guard as your infantry because every every army has has an infantry choice. So you just make it the Tomb Guard. So it's all the new plastic kits. You only have two new. It's all the current range plastic kits that existed, plus two new kits being the Ushabti plastics and the Scorpion plastics. Yeah, and that's it. And you just you have that. Yeah, I mean you'd have to have a. Oh, and probably a bone giant, plastic bone giant. Yeah, I would. Say, I was gonna say like you probably need the bone giant, which you could actually double the bone giant as a uh, screaming skull catapult. You could, oh, like you could double it, the make kit, it some sort of double kit. Yeah, I could yeah, I, see that. Yeah, which is another construct right there, and it's, I think that would work out perfectly. Um, I honestly don't think they're going to do that though. I, I would just, th- I just think it's like an easy. An it is. Easy it's move. an incredible easy move. I mean, the, and, and it's the, got the stuff that's the coolest in the Tomb Kings army available. Yeah, and, and you, you don't have. The only thing that'll be missing that people would be kind of a little butt hurt about is chariots, because people love fucking chariots. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's, it's true though. People yeah, love I, the chariots. I, I guess you could do a new chariot kit. Uh, well, yeah, I don't. I don't. All right, actually, you know what you could do. You could do a chariot. You could. You, they could repurpose most of that chariot kit and just do uh, new new riders. All you would need is new riders. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. You just uh, you just use the tomb guard guys in yeah, there. Yeah. And it would work perfectly. It'd be exactly what people want. Um, but yeah, that's n- not going to happen. They're not. Gonna I don't know about that. They, they've been they've been doing some interesting things. The only army I think has no chance of coming back at all is Bretonians. Bretonians, because specifically Bretonia. because Bretonians had never got new kits. Yeah. Like Bretonians did not get a new kit since previous since before sixth edition. They haven't got a six, book since sixth. Well, edition. I, I think sixth edition was their newest kit. Like yeah, in, they haven't had they haven't. Had, I think Pegasus Knights were their newest kit, and they were in sixth edition. Um, everything that w- nothing that the Brito- everything that was in the Bretonian army was released during sixth edition. They didn't have anything released after it. Okay. None of the older stuff that was pre sixth edition. Oh, I take that back. Um, squires were uh, pre sixth edition. Okay. They still ended up in the army. Okay, um, so and even those were never were just kind of like we have leftover stock. Let's just <laughs> put it in the army. But Tomb Kings got a much more recent release with new yeah. models so i think if there's a if there's a shot of an army coming back it would be between the two of them between the two discontinued armies it's definitely the tomb kings would have a would have the much better shot oh yeah i, I agree 100 percent. i just don't see that happening they have so much they're they're just going to be putting out new armies i think from now on i don't see think you're going to see a lot of focus on older faction armies you're just not. Well, but that's why they, at this point it would be a new army. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. you, you mm. really you re release you re-release sprues that haven't been available for years and then you also re- release new kits. Yeah. I mean I just I, I honestly it's gonna be all new stuff. I mean uh, like they've released what three new storm three stormcast chamber four stormcast chambers since the game was released how many ever years ago? Five years ago? Four years ago, yeah, they do. Well, they, to be to be fair, the only I would say the only one that's like a really like a real release has been the Sacrosanct because like the Extremist Chamber was a, a one kit. Well, it was two is the Dragon and the Mini Dragons. Okay, but that's that's like a release, quote unquote, <laughs> like quote unquote. Yeah, and that well, the Vanguard had the Vanguard had a decent amount. They had they had, they the, had three Blight releases. War. Yeah, they had Blight War, but it's still like this. This is a this is a lot of stuff. Like yeah. this Sacrosanct stuff is like an army. You can just do an army of Sacrosanct. I I painted three of them, and then as I after I painted them, I went. I hate painting these fucking <laughs> models. I really do. I like I painted them, and I was just like. And you can see them. They're on my Instagram. I think I did a good job with them. Menoth. They look exactly like Menoth. <laughs> that was the only. Uh, paint scheme that I think worked with my previous paint schemes because my paint scheme was not designed around a lot of cloth. It just wasn't um, because the shoulder pads are white. And then when you have a lot of right. cloth, you either have to paint the cloth color or you have to paint it the same color as the shoulder pads. And I don't like painting. I like that cream. I don't like doing that. And it's I was I looked at him like not a Dangles fan. Fuck this. Fuck these models. <laughs> fuck them and their stupid asses. 
<laughs> that's, I'm like, I'm going to do corn because I'm going to paint red. Just all red and gore and everything like that. Do black. Do Just black corn armor. Black, black and gold. Black and gold. Make them look like, uh, what's a uh, world leader? Not world leaders. Um, I'm going to do a John Z. Sons of Horus. John Cena. Um, <laughs> is that just nothing? Just, <laughs> just you feel nothing? Feel nothing. <laughs> Can't see me. No, Sons of Horse is green. You're talking uh, uh, Black Legion. Black Legion, right? Yeah. The, the, the the thing that the Sons of Horus turned into. Yes, because I have a Sons of Horus army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know what I'm you know what I'm printing out right now as we speak. A dildo? <laughs> no, but that was actually one of the things that came to mind when I was, uh, <laughs> I was like, what should I print? Like the first test prints that I was doing, I was like, what should I print? Dildos. And I looked it up, and I was like. There's a lot of dildo, thing. but the thing is, they always tell you it's like you got to smooth that shit out. Well, it's not even that. It's 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 um, these the this is a, a PLA. It's going through an extruder. It's getting superheated. Who knows what chemicals are being released? Um, yeah, we don't necessarily want you to put this in your body. <laughs> Maybe put a condom on the dildo. Maybe put a condom on the dildo. Yeah. But it's always they're all the same. They're all just like a big dildo with like a weird funny head. <laughs> so it's like a big like like dildo and it's got like a David Lynch head on the end of it. Nice. Actually if I saw that I would have printed that out. Nice. But David no. Lynch dildo? A David Lynch dildo. No. A Lynch doe? No, you see, it's all the same. It's all like it's um you'll see like a stormtrooper one or Darth mm-hmm. Vader. It's all like like, you know, Star Wars and, and classic stuff. Like I would, what I want is I want um, a dildo with uh, Patrick Stewart's head on the top, and then uh, for the balls I want two Jordies. Why two Jordies? Why wouldn't not? It, wouldn't it make more sense to have like Jordy and Riker? No, because it's it's you don't you want them the same. You don't want your you don't want your boys being different. But that's weird. Well, d- oh oh oh! <laughs> it's a dildo with Patrick Stewart's head. It's Data going to be weird. And lore. Oh well, okay. They're, yeah. That works. They're the yeah. same. Yeah. You could be like, why do you have two datas on there? No, 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 my friend. <laughs> data and lore. Data and lore. <laughs> well, where's before? Get out of here. Get out of here with that nonsense. Oh, it's before the uh, one from uh, yeah, Nemesis. Nemesis. Uh, Nemesis. No, another another r- attempt at Wrath of Khan. And it's the you, they can't you can't you can't keep going back into that well. No, they've done it three times already now. Yep. Yeah. yeah, you just can't keep going in that well. It's uh, it it, it worked once, and it worked because of fucking. Ricardo, Ricardo Maltabon. Maltabon. Like, there's a reason. Now, it, it worked because there was a lot of things well, that happened that yeah. clicked, but he was one of them. He was a very important factor. He was charismatic. Yeah. Well, also, like, it made sense because he was like, that he was a... He tests re- me. He tests me. Because he was from the fucking show. Like, there was an episode. He was in the show. Like, like, yeah. like why would you make Nemesis and not use one of the many characters? Like, how much better would Nemesis have been if it was a fucking character from the show, not some made-up nonsense? Because... Uh, Next Generation had a huge problem in not having reoccurring villains. They just didn't do it. They had they they could have easily they could have done a Q story. They could have done. You like, can't do Q in the movies. No one cares enough to have Q in the movies, which is stupid. Q should be in the movies. No, Q's Q's awesome. Th- no, Q is all powerful. I want Q to be, do a mariachi band on the big screen. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, Damn it's, it, it's it's dumb. Uh, I actually I think Q is one of the dumbest things in Star Trek. Q's hilarious. I I like John Delancey and I like his performance, but I think the concept of Q um as a reoccurring villain But they're the Q. <laughs> is stupid. The Q. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It, Proper. It, the Q. Yeah. And like uh, when the when the when when Q and Q had a baby Q, that was even dumber. There was a lot of Qs. There was a lot of Qs. Uh there well cuz cuz lore was destroyed in the show. Yes. So you couldn't bring lore back. Uh Or could you? Uh, no, you you couldn't. It was like there was he was destroyed pretty definitively. Well, yeah, I mean, but I'm ta- uh, I'm talking like name-wise. There's like there's really only one major villain. They could have brought did, did they uh did they kill Romulan uh uh what's her name? Sila? Uh Tashiar, Romulan Sela. Tashiar. Yeah. yeah, did they kill her? I don't think they did. She would have been an ideal choice for Nemesis. As she well. would have been another one. She would have been actually great for Nemesis. Yeah, she would have been an ideal choice for Nemesis. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, cuz cuz and that would that would even fit in with the fucking Romulan storyline they wanted. Yeah. Like actually instantaneously there you go there is a fucking character from the show who you don't actually need to build a bunch of background for you just you put them in you know they have, should have fought nemesis ah, so annoying those aliens that made the the guy's heads explode in the in the season failure of no, no, season no. one they didn't make his head explode when they shot him with the phasers his head exploded. Exploded. yeah that's, that's what i'm saying those yeah. weird fucking worm aliens that yeah. like appeared and then were never mentioned again <laughs> yeah but, well they were supposed to be that they were supposed to be the big bad yeah. but then borg happened and everyone was just like borg or have, give us more borg or have, 
have uh, everyone's favorite Jewish analogy, the uh, a Jewish stereotype analogy, the Ferengi be the villains in Star Trek Nemesis. You think you think the Ferengi? I thought the Ferengi were more like a like a kind of like. Uh, like Yankee trader gypsy they, kind of thing. Well, well, it's all it's all they're that. kind of everything mixed it's together. It's all that it's all that European like like Jewish gypsy like the reason why the Nazis killed millions of people stereotypes. Yeah. That's what it is. It's it's <laughs> the the thing that uh, Legend of the Flame Princess guy is going to see people <laughs> about. For those who don't know, uh, <laughs> the, uh, J Raggy has been uh, posted some some uh, some. Some interesting stuff and, lately. And as I, and as I stated, like he was a white American who moved to Norway. Ninety nine percent chance of Nazism. It's true. I mean, it's it's so hard to tell nowadays. It's like, uh, it's as I feel. It's like being as outraged as we have to be in this day and age is exhausting. And if you don't feel outraged, you also feel like a piece of shit because you're not outraged. So I mean, it's you have to take this the uh, nice nice blend in hand. Check it. Also, um, oh, what I was going to tell you, you know what I'm actually printing out right now on my 3D printer as we speak? I'm printing out a Titan. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't download a Titan, would you, Steve? Uh, is it is it a, is an actual rip yeah. of a 3D model? Well, here, uh, I'll show you a picture because uh, no one at home was going to be able to see it, but it's an actual Titan. I mean, it clearly looks like a 3D printed Titan. Well, but... it's, a, it's a, well duh, because it is 3D printed. Yeah. But uh, no, they uh, they have this new stuff now. It's called XTC 3D, and you kind of like paint it on the model, and it it um does it fill those little weird? It fills in the gaps, and it also melts the lines a little bit, okay. so it blends it those all together. Printing lines or whatever the hell you call yeah, them. Yeah, I mean the, like the I, aliasing. <laughs> we, yeah. They need anti-aliasing for 3D printers. It's it's actually far better. The shit looks far better than I ever expected it to, that it would look. Um, especially for the sh for like some of the high quality 40k shit, because dude, everything 40k is on there. Oh sure, everything rhinos, um, the Sakarans, all of, all of those tanks and all that shit is on. Especially sure. Space Marine, um, and it's good quality too, like really good quality prints. Uh, the only thing that's like shitty quality are the actual Space Marines. Like you think that they'd be able to get. <laughs> At this point, the Space Marine's correct. No, they look awful. Every 3D printed <laughs> Space Marine looks like poo. Most of the 3D printed stuff I've seen kind of looks like shit. Like, there's like, it seems like it's really, it's it's good for uh, inorganic stuff, like really good for inorganic. Like, so like anything that's very boxed, so like bunkers, oh, yeah. uh, towers. Terrain looks amazing yeah, like nowadays. Scaffolding and that kind of stuff. But like organic stuff, it looks pretty shitty. Like yeah. if you were to print like an adventurer, like they're going to look really fucking Yeah, I don't weird. know people who, who actually print out miniatures with their 3D printer. I'm like, what 3D printer that you have are, that makes you happy with the with what you're getting out of it. Uh, um, there's probably a super high end one well, right yeah. now. But I mean even the super high end ones you're still going to get that uh that line, those lines that aliasing like you were saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know I don't know a better way to put it. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely right and it's but for stuff like vehicles and terrain, it looks fucking awesome. And like even stuff with the vehicles too. I was like, "Oh, this can't look that good." That Titan head that I have, if you have it in your hand, you're actually like Oh shit! This looks amazing for like yeah, the five hours it took it's to print. Flat, it's flat surfaces. Like yeah, yeah, it'll work. Holy shit, dude! That's like here's here's my thing. If anybody ever looks to getting a three D printer, number one, don't don't get a three D printer because like the learning curve on a three D printer is so fucking high. <laughs> I spent the last two weeks. I got I got it um the Wednesday after we recorded last um. And I got it, and I, I put it all together, and I was working on it. And first of all, the the plate that it comes with that heats up, that it's, it's garbage. And everyone tells you that. They're like, oh, that thing's garbage. you got to get this. I'm like, well, why does it come with it if it's garbage? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So I, I got – it come with a glass sheet. So I took the glass sheet off. Like, you're supposed to put tape on it and everything. I'm like, this, this is dumb. Why, why would anybody do this? <laughs> so you're supposed to get a mirror from Lowe's, and it's only like five bucks. So, okay, I did that. So then I'm I'm doing everything like that, and you got to level it constantly, right? <laughs> and you have to like you get these little knobs and make sure that the plate, so that the knob is like only like point one millimeter <laughs> off. The like you have to be very specific in this because if it's too high off, everything's gonna go bleh, and if it's too low, it's gonna smoosh, it's gonna clog your nozzle. And I'm like, well, fuck this. I wonder if using it to make molds would be ideal. 
you can. Well, actually, you know what I saw that's really cool is uh, you know those rollers I get from yeah, Green yeah, Stuff yeah. Roll. Oh, you can print those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of those on there nice. I've seen. That's and they're smart. like I've seen like stampers, like little okay. stampers to make. Yeah, it seemed like it would be a really good accessory producer. That it is. Um, but yeah, so I I get this glass. So I finally get it printing right and everything like that. Um, then my buddy comes over and he's looking. And he's like, "You're not getting enough out of here. It's probably clogged up there." So I get in there and I'm trying to pull the knot and get the nozzle off. Right? And I'm like, "Why isn't this thing fucking coming off?" Um, so I, I I end up getting a pair of um of a uh, of like really high like my my real good clamps. Right? Mm. And I'm just give him the clamps. <laughs> give him the clamps. So I have to wrench it, and it's like he's like, "This shouldn't take. This, it shouldn't be this hard to get off." So I, I get a pair. I get a lock jaw. Uh, pair of pliers and eventually i'm able to pull it off apparently the person like whatever factory or whatever if this was refurbished soldered the nozzle into the <laughs> into the thing um so i was like well fuck this so i had to buy a new one it was 20 bucks which in the grand scheme of things not a lot right but i ended up getting so i got i had to wait get the new one got the new one in put all that together got the new base for it um got it and so i'm finally getting it printing and it just fucking took forever to learn how to fucking do this. <laughs> I mean, and then, like, there's other things, too. Like, last night I was printing off a different Warhound Titan head, right? So I'm printing it off and I'm printing it off, and it's actually vertical. Whoever designed this thing did it vertically instead of laying flat. So you have to put these things called rafts on the bottom that it has to build in these supports to make sure it doesn't fall over. Because I've casted it and uh, I've printed a couple things that just fall over on the sheet. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to have supports <laughs> for it, which is fine. I understand that. Like, I'm... I from from doing casting, I understand that you have to build supports in for stuff so that airflow and blah 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 blah. And so same thing with this. But it's like these things, these prints take forever. That head that I showed you took six uh, about five hours to print. That's out. insane. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. But when you think about it in the long run, eh, it, that head costs. I think the because it actually prices it out on a. Uh, on the the program that I use, it says like you what your materials. Yeah, it says it costs you this much in material. Like you could print in like I'm using this material. It costs this much, and it says like oh it you that head cost me thirty nine cents to print. <laughs> mm. So I was like, that's not bad in the long run, but it just takes fucking forever. And it's not the time that kills you. It's that worrying of will this thing fail <laughs> in hour four thirty <laughs> that pisses you off because that head that I was printing off last night. Um, I ended up, I had terrible insomnia last night. I couldn't sleep. So I was up anyway. I was playing Shadows of War. Um, and I'm sitting there looking at the printer, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right. Ah, oh, God damn it! <laughs> it was like hour <laughs> six of me printing because it was actually because uh, it was a different head. It, it was a 10-hour print. Mm -hmm. And in hour six, the thing fucking failed. And nice. I was like, fucking fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck, fuck, nice. fuck, fuck. And I'm like throwing shit. And I'm all pissed off. Everything's all over the place. <laughs> And, oh, and this was the other thing. Another thing that goes wrong. So I'm sitting there, like, and this is all like made in someone's garage. Like this, these three D printers are not. Yeah. You know, like this is not designed for mass production. Sure. This is someone's garage. So I'm going out there and I put it all together. And all of a sudden, um, the other night I was printing out something and the, pl the heating plate failed. Like it just dipped down in, in temperature. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck did that? It's so I open up the the control box and I'm tightening up all the controls and everything like that. I don't have a meter reader because I'm not Pat B. I don't work on robots, mm -hmm. so I don't have all that shit. Um, and I'm like, and I put it back in and it starts heating up again and the plate's losing heat. However, the cable that's connecting the plate to the thing is like fucking hot. And I'm like, that's not good because that'll burn down my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it turns out that there was just like, I'm going online and I'm like fucking, I'm like, I'm in. You know, <laughs> I'm looking up all these stuff on different forums. And of course, it's like on forum boards. You never can tell because like the one problem that you're looking for, it's like for me, you're like, you're like July of 2013. Is this even applicable to this machine? <laughs> it says it's the same machine, but it's probably not. But it, it turns out that there was like one prong that if the two parts of the prong touch, it creates a short, which heats up the entire kit. I'm like, it heats up the coupling, which causes the coupling to fail, which causes the heat to lose. And I'm like, well, fuck it. Why do they even build it like this then? <laughs> if they know this is a known failure point, why do they build it like that? Oh, don't buy 3D printing machines, guys. <laughs> I'm sure I will like it in the future. I've, I've printed off a couple things at this point, and I'm very happy with what I got. But that week that I spent playing around with it i think god i'm off work right now because otherwise i'd be sitting at work getting all stewed like in my <laughs> Just anger still mad about your three printer not working and i'd have to go home and work on it for like the 30 minutes before i have to pick up my kids and like i have to spend like family god, that time. would have taken you a month 
I, it would take me years. I probably would have been like, ah, fuck it. Just throwing it away. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of how I was with, with an airbrush when I first got my first airbrush. Is like I didn't understand how to use an airbrush. So it was all just trial and error. I mean, I would go online, but airbrushes are really finesse. Like, you can't. The worst thing about the airbrush is, is getting it to continuously function. That's the worst thing about an airbrush. It is. I mean, and like you have to like, like just getting it to continuously do what it's supposed to fucking do is the hardest task with an airbrush. Since GW changed their paint formula, uh, I haven't had to water down uh, to to use airbrush um, thinner on any of any GW paints, and I love it for that. Do you use the GW Air or do you use no? Just the regular paint. I mm. have a I have a really nice airbrush, so I don't have to really worry about the air. Um, it, it's it's been perfectly fine. I haven't had an issue at, at all, and I use like a really small needle. Um, it I, no problems at point three. It's a it, it's a posh talent I use. It's it's not like a great airbrush, but it's a it's a nicer airbrush and it does exactly what I need it to do. Um, if you want to see what it can do, go on my Instagram account. And you can you'll see it on there. Like all my shit's airbrushed, pretty much. Um, but it's the same thing. You can't watch a video about like when a guy says like, "All right, so now we're gonna pull them, we're gonna pull back the action, and we're gonna, this is you're just gonna go just really straight and it creates this line." I'm like, and I'm like sitting there doing that, and it's like going, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> your airbrush is just on fire. <laughs> it's just this thing doesn't have any electrical parts at all." Yeah, <laughs> it, you're just like, uh, so it it took about like three years of continuously fucking around with the airbrush to get that to work. Thank God I didn't have to worry about that with the 3D printer, but you know. Yeah. Right now, I'm printing out my. I airbrush this. I know it looks good. Yeah. You did your little train there. I learned. I learned the airbrush. You learned the airbrush. Did you paint this little ar armature? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's my entry for the competition. I need to uh, fix the skull because it all it got all fucked up. I was really annoyed because I, I did a really really awesome looking skull. What competition? Uh, Gragnard. They've got a night painting competition for this month. Should I put in mine that was actually picked up by Games Workshop? Yeah. I thought you had to buy a night titan there. You, you have to buy either an armature box or. You have to buy from them to get it. Uh, yeah, yes. I've you know I bought, uh, but I, I think they they uh, whatever. The uh, I could probably just go in there because I've bought. And, I did a really you know, nice 60, 70 bucks worth. Well, of stuff. You, it's a, it's a it's a dollar value spent as well. So like yeah. you, you could just buy something. Yeah, else. I know I've spent like seventy bucks uh, in the last month. Anyway, so, so like the uh, the fucking skull I did was awesome. It looked great, but I did it with a micron pen. So then when I did a wash. It, just, it fucking disintegrated it. And I was like, I've never had that happen before. Because I've washed over Micron pens before, but I guess this one I used was a little too bi of different ink than the ones I normally use, so it just disintegrated it. So I tried to re tried to save it with paint, and it didn't really work out. It so I'm just, gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cover out. Should, oh, I, should I put the one that was uh gold. that was picked by Warhammer uh online as like their model of the day? Should I bring that one in there and watch it lose? I'm to, sure it will. To some some scrub. Oh, I'm, I'm sure so, it'll lose. I was so salty. <laughs> like the salt, like you could like literally use me to flavor meat I, I, to I, preserve meat you could have put you could have pressed the steak to me and preserved it for the amount my of salt fancy I was, was tickled your fancy was tickled because even <laughs> you even you saw that you're like oh that's bullshit yeah. <laughs> it was funny <laughs> yeah i mean that's i like, thought there were several models better than the model that won yeah ex exactly <laughs> exactly and it's that's i fucking <laughs> god damn it God damn it. <laughs> I get so salty. Um, let's talk about some other news stuff. Um, uh, apparently, there was some issue with uh, um, Cool Mini. <clears throat> You're going to read this whole thing? Ready. Uh, cool Mini's not latest Kickstarter, Cthulhu, Death May Die. Before who it was who sent us this information, by the uh, way? Ken Mayer. Ken Mayer. Uh Cool Mini Night, latest Kickstarter, Cthulhu, Death May Die. Before it was launched, they showed off a massive 18-inch tall figure of Cthulhu. Then at the Kickstarter's launch, they had a base pledge of $100 for the core game and stretch goals, and a second pledge limited to 100 backers for the base game and the big Cthulhu miniature for $220. Over the first 14 minutes of the Kickstarter's launch, they kept releasing new sets of pledges for the big Cthulhu in batches of 250, 100, 100, 100, 100, 200, 200, 200, respectively, while increasing the price for each batch and pushing the delivery date back by a month each time, ranging from July 2019 to March 2020. Needless to say, the community weren't happy with the lack of information about the big miniature being limited to an early bird, cool mini or not, increasing the price of each iteration, going completely at odds with the concept of economies of scale and production. And many were annoyed that it launched at 3 p.m. EST when they were at work and couldn't access Kickstarter. Oh, and as I mentioned, it also turns out that the big Cthulhu miniature comes with exclusive rules and is the finale slash final episode slash final boss of the game's campaign. So only those 1250 early backers were able or actually going to get a full complete game after much negative coverage and soul aka wallet searching 
Cool Me Do Not generously acquiesced to allowing the core game backers to pay an additional $150 $250 in total to upgrade their pledge to get the big Cthulhu mini. $150 for a giant Cthulhu mini. And then set up a distinct $250 pledge level for new backers to get the game and the miniature. They then confirmed that they'd be shipping the core game in one wave, which you had to pay shipping on, and then Cthulhu in a later wave at an estimated cost of $20 for US backers and $70 for non US backers. That's just for Cthulhu. So it's an extra $170, $220 shipping on addition to the core game to actually complete the game. You do get a smaller Cthulhu in the core game, but he doesn't come with the rules for the finale of the campaign. Cool Meter Not says they'll consult the designers about redesigning the campaign finale and making rules to use the regular Cthulhu mini. Oh, but did I mention that these rules for the finale will also be a paid add-on? The last part of this debacle are the stretch goals. The monster mini sculpts are great, but Cool Meter Not keeps front-loading more and more human characters, because we all know there's no need for monsters or great elder things in the mythos, right? The first additional monster appeared at 1.54 million. They then announced Dagon as the 1.71 million stretch goal, however he doesn't come with rules. Nope, backers have the privilege of pledging another $90,000 to the campaign to reach 1.8 million before they get his rules as a stretch goal. I really like Lovecraft, have all the Arkham, Eldritch Horror, and Mansions of Madness products from Fantasy Flight, and I back the first Cthulhu Wars game, but I'm not backing this with a point of principle. I don't see why people have to pay an extra $170 as a U.S. backer or $220 as a non-U.S. backer, uh, including average shipping costs, to get a complete game. For context, I've also backed all of Cool Minion Not's Zomicide games, but after the bait and switch with Zomicide Invader, which I didn't back, Cool Minion Not can shove it. It's just pure greed on their part. In Invader, the base pledge had f fairly poor mini sculpts, uh, they have. They now have Adrian Smith as their artistic director, so it looked like old 40k light. The campaign was slower than previous Zombicide, so halfway through they announced the Zombicide Dark Star standalone side game for $90, which was limited edition and had much, much better player and monster sculpts, but you had to pledge another $100 for the Invader crap, the Crappy Link Invader game to get Dark Side as a paid add-on. So to get the game with the good sculpts, you had to pledge a minimum of $190. Uh, it was completely obvious that they knew if they put the decent-looking Dark Side as the core game in the base pledge, then very few would buy the shitty-looking Invader as a $90 add-on. And hope I make it for the next podcast. <laughs> and you did. You did. You did. Um, yeah, they did. Um, the Cthulhu mini is, is cool. What a shit show. But see, here's the thing. Do you see that? They're, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, and the Reaper Bones one is only 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Reaper Bones yeah. is big, but it's, it's not as big as that one. That one's 18 inches tall. Uh, is it? I thought the Reaper, the Reaper Bones The Reaper uh, one's pretty big. 12, maybe. It's, it's solid size, and it's yeah. a great model, but it's not 18 inches tall. Maybe 9 inches. Um... So my wife tells me I'm, I'm, it's big enough. <laughs> yeah, my wife says it's 18 inches. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the problem is uh, people still backed it. It's still, it still has one point <laughs> nine million dollars pledged. Like yeah. if you want to send them a message that you don't like their shitty business practices, don't buy less of the Kickstarter. Buy, buy zero. zero of the Kickstarter. <laughs> the the it's like um, you know my stance and cool me or not. I think they suck. I think they're a shitty yeah. company. I've, I think the business um, practices are garbage. Uh, I've I've gotten my refund they for suck. for black plague because i was just like fuck it i'm not dealing with this yeah. with your stupid like after all the court I'm like no ship me my goddamn fucking game because it goes out to your stores it's not what i don't understand about cool mini and i'm I, this is what i'm i'm wondering about especially with that and like we we're saying about like why is all of a sudden it becoming more expensive and taking longer to produce something that you have the cash scam you have the pre-orders for it C cool meter not was like no matter what no matter how, what face changes they have made <laughs> Cool Me or Not has been founded and is still owned by people who operated internet scams. Yeah. That is what they did. They operated they operated retail scams online. They sold product they didn't ship. There was a there's a you can you can look up all of New the background wave miniatures. You can look up all of the background for yourself. They operated multiple scams for many years. After scams completed, they went not underground, but they like kind of laid low, came back, founded a site that had nothing to do with selling stuff. Uh, parlayed that site into a miniatures company, but that core spirit of being a scumbag who scams people is never going to go away. So no matter what, no matter what uh, leverage they pl apply to the industry, uh, no matter how many stand-up artists or writers or designers they employ, no matter what they do, that core we are pieces of shit is always going to be part of that company. Which is why I don't support Cool Meter or not. Never have supported Cool Meter or not. Yeah. I think they're garbage. I agree. Also, Zombicide is a shitty game. Fucking terrible game, actually. Yeah. So, there well, was I that. Mean, <laughs> well, I mean, like, where do you go after... Well, so they'll, they'll I'm talking the original Zombicide. It was one of the worst uh, board games yeah. I've ever played. I was so, like, I mean, this game is terrible. So Why is this popular? They've done two... They're, they've done one sci-fi game. They'll probably do another sci-fi Kickstarter, which they might not even do because the other one didn't sell as well. Mm -hmm. um, they did end up doing... Um, 
and they they own Zombicide now. They bought it, mm-hmm. so they have to make make back their per, their their purchase. Yeah, um, they probably they've already done that. But yeah, they have to redo that. So they have another sci-fi game left. What do you do at that point? Do you go back to like Zombicide, the original Zombicide, re-release it with new rules? Game of Thrones Zombicide. Ooh, because they have the Game, game of, of Thrones, Zombies. Cause, well, they have the Game of Thrones license, so you just do Zombicide, but you make it White Walkers. They instead. don't have the Game of Thrones li- Game of Thrones license. They uh, another company which is producing their miniatures through Coolmini or not has the license. Ah, I see. Okay, it's like how Super Dungeon Explorer used to be. And it was always Ninja. Uh, it was Ninja, Ninja Division, Division, but it was produced through Cool Mini. Through, right. Produced through Cool Mini until uh, after that first Kickstarter. Then they were like, nope, done. Yeah. Which still haven't gotten that Kickstarter yet either. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'm still well, like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, that's that's been a long time. I think that's been like, what, three years, two years? It's been a while. Yeah. Two years over. It might break Kingdom Death's record. Uh, no. Kingdom Death did deliver, though. And it, yeah, it delivered big. So uh, There's a... There's a. Uh, I was just looking at something for Kingdom Death, and it was. Uh, oh, one of the guys I game with. Uh, he's he's a good guy, but he was just like, "Yeah, this guy's playing Kingdom Death. I think it looks stupid." <laughs> <laughs> he's a big Tolkien fan, so. Uh, oh, then he. Well, I'm a big Tolkien fan, but I think Kingdom Death is awesome. Well, I like dick monsters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of which, you either like dick monsters, you either like <sighs> dick monsters, or you hate freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you hate freedom. <laughs> he's also. I, I should. I, he's not the only one. Every person that I told I bought a 3D printer to was immediately like, print me a gun. Like, that was <laughs> every person was like, print me a gun. I'm like, I'm not printing a gun. I don't I don't own a gun. Why would I want to print a gun? I'm going to print a Titan is what I'm going to do. <laughs> print a Titan that's an, actually a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hysterical. It's actually just like the regular Titan, except it's like the barrel's like in the chest. Yeah, it's it's just, got like the it's, handle it's in the background. It's just a gun. <laughs> it's just a gun. Yeah, it's a Titan-shaped gun. Hey. It's a nice looking, uh, nice looking Land Raider you got there. <laughs> <laughs> he shot my Land Raider with his Titan. <laughs> he, he lived, it's not even like in the gun; it's like in the chest. Yeah, it's just it's a hole in the, the chest. chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like this idea, Steve. See, I have to, I'll, I'll have to to do to figure this out. Uh, Tim was asking me. He was like, "You're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you should come up with some sculpts of your own." I'm like, "I can't. I don't have that talent." Are you kidding me? Uh, um, speaking of Lord of the Rings, um. What's it called? Dun, uh, dun, 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 Battle of Pelennor Fields, August. August release. It's coming up real soon. Sweet. Um, they're doing a box set, apparently. A box set and... A uh, four drill box set? I, apparently. Sick. Um, I'm, it'll be interesting to see what's going to be in there. Um, I don't know this for sure. Um, they have the Forge World open days this weekend, so uh, news is trickling in. All those those Forge World Lord of the Rings models are so fucking nice. Um, they have the... All I do know is that a t- Titanicus is coming out in August, too. Though that got the the box set, the big fucking massive box yeah. set. I like Dane on his pig. <laughs> um, I don't know how long the stuff is going to be available. Like, I don't know if it's limited or if it's going to be. I mean, uh, the Lord of the Rings stuff is still huge in like not America. Yeah. Like every like there's like like all of Europe really does the, a ton of the Lord of the Rings minis gaming. Like yeah, but that's Europe. Uh, They're still... too busy watching FIFA right now to to really care about. Gaming. Oh, everyone cares about FIFA right now. Yes, it's the World Cup. <laughs> it's the World Cup. It's suddenly, the world's cup. Su- suddenly, people who don't give a shit about soccer are like, wow, I've got to watch all these soccer games. Steve, Steve, it's coming home. Whatever. It's coming home, Steve. I'm coming home. <laughs> That's my Kickstarter song. Did you, uh, have you seen that with the, like, the, the, you know, all the English people now are like, it was all just self deprecating. We didn't really think we were going to win. I'm like, yes, you did, you idiots. Don't don't come to me talking about like I have no idea. What no, no, about. we didn't actually think. No, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't follow the World Cup. I don't follow okay. sports. So, but you'll like this. You'll get a you'll get a chuckle out of this. You'll you'll be chuffed. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to be chuffed. You're ready to be chuffed. So, England had this because it's not the UK. England has its own team that goes to the World Cup. Yeah. England had this whole campaign about saying it's coming home, like they're going to win it this year. Um, and then surprisingly, they made it all the way to the semifinals. Like they. You know they they beat all these other people and they end, they end up not getting knocked out and they do well they they win they win on a penalty goal which is I think stupid to begin with I think if you win on a penalty goal you should go home in shame um, because no sport should end in a tie period except hockey hockey it's okay I think hockey if there's a tie there should be a fight to determine the winner I agree 
And I think they should also you, you can you nominate a champion from the team. You can't have that in soccer because they'll just lay on the ground and complain with someone. You know, they'll both throw a punch and both whiff and then both fall, fall down like ah <laughs> oh, my hand. Uh, so you know, you, you nominate a champion. So that, and that that would be a that would be a crucial member of your team who just rides the bench until fight time, and you'd be like, get the champion. <laughs> no, you have them on the ice. They're called enforcers, Steve. No, no, no. You don't want them to be tired. You want them to be fresh and ready for the Dude, fight. These are hockey players. They're always <laughs> ready for a fight. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Bob Probert? Of course, you haven't seen Bob Probert. I've um, seen the movie Goon. <laughs> it's it's Goon is yeah. That's essentially the same thing. I love Goon. <laughs> yeah, Goon's a great movie. Um, is the second one out yet? Uh, it is out, but I haven't seen it. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen it either. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much more you could do with that because, like, the first movie was kind of perfect. So I uh, agree. It seems it's like it's like one of those things where it's like I do like the movie, so I'll probably watch the sequel. But it's kind of like, what the fuck? You ever you seen Slap Shot? Yeah, Sla- yeah. Slap Shot is the greatest sports movie of yeah, all Slapshot's time. Yeah, Slap a great movie. True. Sure, the, <laughs> the brothers, the three brothers. It's yeah. been, I mean, it's been fucking. Years and yeah. years and years since I've seen the McKenzie movie, brothers. But, yeah, but yeah, they're uh, the favorite is when they're doing the national anthem and the guy and the 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 ref skates up to him. Like, can you you jackasses do anything? And they're like, we're trying to listen to the fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But anyway, yeah. So they they make it all the way to semifinals and they're like, this is it, boys. It's coming home. It's coming home, boys. And then they lose to Croatia. And they're all like, oh, Croatia was a great team. They did really great. We should be proud of our boys. And all of them are just like silently crying into their, their warm beers that they lost. And it's not actually coming home. Well, then you- and then everyone online was making fun of them, like saying like, oh, yeah, it's coming home, guys. Like, oh, we didn't actually mean it. We, it was all just self-deprecating humor. So w- upon hearing this, I can assure you that I am a chuffed up bloke. You are a chuffed up bloke. Yeah. Because of, of the failure of, I'm, of I'm, England. I'm quite chuffed. Yeah, so the the actual finals this year for the World Cup are between Croatia and France. That's weird. That that's pretty. That that sounds like a big upset because if I remember correctly, the finals are usually like Germany and. Well, the last time it was Germany and Brazil. Yeah. Or no, it was Germany and someone else because Bra- I think Brazil Mexico? lost in the, in the Spain? semifinals. Argentina, I want to think something like that, but Germany won. Uh, yeah, but there was a semifinal blowout because Brazil was hosting, and it was Germany versus Brazil, and Germany won seven to one. <laughs> it was right. like, and in soccer, that score is unbelievable. Right. And then, did, didn't Germany get shellacked by someone this year? Like by someone random? Yeah, they get they didn't do. Was it Brazil? Maybe it was Brazil or Japan? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. They, they lost to someone they shouldn't have lost Ger- to. Japan went pretty far this Japan year. Japan went good. Yeah. Japan did good. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, it was funny because I was like, I was like, huh? There's Japan soccer fans. Who knew? <laughs> oh yeah, they're very polite too. They clean up the stadium after yeah. they leave. <laughs> I like this. This is like two guys who know nothing about soccer talking about soccer. Right. It's like we're just trying to well, piece I, it together. I, well, the thing is, like, I guess this year was like a really cool World Cup because a bunch of stuff happened that was unexpected. Yeah. Like there were a lot of upsets and teams expected to do well did shitty. Teams expected yeah. to do shitty did well. Oh, there was a bunch of stuff that didn't happen. So. Did a bunch of people fall down pretending to be injured? <laughs> there definitely was one I saw. I saw that on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that Some guy. guy like, he was just like, like, oh, rolling. like the ultimate <laughs> fall. And it's like. No one came even remotely close to touching you. That's like, every <laughs> that's every soccer yeah, game. It's ridiculous. And then uh it, I think that should imme- <laughs> I think that should be an immediate ban from the sport. Like you are gone. Yeah, You're yeah. never coming back. I yeah, I I agree. I think it should be like Like not a penalty, not a flag. That player is ejected from the sport. They're <laughs> gone. gone. <laughs> Fucking gone. Yeah. I don't know. I I agree. I agree. Um but yeah, that you know Mexico did re- well too, and don't they? Use, they Mexico's always kind of like mid tier. Not really. Aren't they? They're, they're, oh, they're mid tier. I'll give you mid tier. Yeah. I don't know these things, Steve. I don't. I don't. I, oh, I only know what I hear like from like the fucking ambiance of like people talking about it. Like I the, work in a heavily the static. I work in a heavily Hispanic school. Um, so I hear all about this up until June 20th, which is my last day of school. And after that, I have no idea what's it's going on. It's a void. <laughs> it's a void when it comes to this stuff. But uh, the guys I do talk to, they do fill me in. And it's like, it's very interesting to listen to. Oh, I watched A Quiet Place, speaking of void. Oh, yeah. How was yeah. You like it? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, did you saw Hereditary, right? I did not see Hereditary. Oh, you gotta see Hereditary. Yeah, I'm gonna see that one next. You gotta see Hereditary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Quiet Place was uh, it was nice because uh, I when I first was watching it, I was like, this is gonna be one of those fucking movies where nothing happens in the last minute they show the alien, and then I was like, oh, it's not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think. There was something else I wanted to talk about today in terms of there was something other gaming. Was it that Batgirl costume? I find that sexist and demeaning. Because it's Batgirl. Yes. I'm sorry. 
Batwoman costume. <laughs> it's a Batwoman. Co- no, that's a Batgirl costume. Yeah, it's definitely Batgirl. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's a Paul Dini Batgirl. Like people get like people are all like, "This is the Batman animated series. It shouldn't have any sex." I'm like, "Have you seen Paul Dini's sketchbook? Paul Dini is the biggest cheesecake dr- artist on the planet." Yeah. Have you seen fucking Bruce T- uh, Bruce Tim's shit? Like oh, that's what I meant, Bruce Tim. Yeah. Not not Paul Dini. Bruce Tim. Yeah. Bruce yeah. Tim just draws nothing. Bruce Tim is jacked off to his own drawings. No question. Oh, yeah. Like no question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, oh yeah, who has it? Like, fucking, what? Like one of his early sketches of Harley Quinn was her in the fucking uh, pie, and she's like, she's like, I got an ice cream pie for you, put in. And I was just like, Bruce Timm's a pervert. This is awesome. <laughs> Bruce, he is a pervert. Um, God, I'm trying to think of something. Ah, uh, I did order. You know, what I ordered. I ordered some of those chameleon paints. From oh, Green nice. Stuff World. I'm gonna. Uh, get, I'll give a. I'll give a review when I get them. Here, in. Here's here's my thing. They only work over black. Yes, they have to be over black. Uh, they're de- they're good with they're good at airbrush. They're super thin. You can't do anything to them afterwards. Yes. Like you can only seal them. Uh, and like with some gloss is the way to do it. Because if you do a wash or anything, it completely destroys the effect. <sighs> okay. F- FYI, yeah. If you do a wash, it's gone. It look it's it still looks cool, but that color change is destroyed if you do a wash okay. of any kind. So what I figured I was gonna do is I'm gonna do most of my airbrushing like my normal stuff like skin tones and blah 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 blah. Um, and then well, the last step that I will do before I go back in and start doing detailing is I'm going to do the red with the airbrush. And then uh, after that, I was going to uh, just go back and do the detail stuff because there's not much that's going to get that on like maybe the Reavers. There's going to be a little bit. That's what I'm doing. Oh, that's what I thought you'd get a kick out of this is that with the Reavers and the, the Blood Warriors, I'm actually using the Shades by our models as like the leaders of the, oh, cool. the Reavers. So I'm putting them in there. So I'm, I'll give me an excuse to paint them up for Shade Spire and I could use them for Shade Spire still, but they'll also be in my actual army Sweet. as like leaders. And you know, I know you could put them separately as like yeah, their you own can little field units. them as their own units. Yeah, but they're not really that good. They're okay. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like them. I think they're I think they're good. I think they're small. Like there 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 are points cost where you look at your list and you're like, do I want to put an endless spell? Oh wait, I'm corn. Mm, oh look a Shade Spire warband fits. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're very yeah. inexpensive points. Have you, so. have you um, previewed any of the the ch- new Shade Spire stuff? The board or the, the cards? I have them. You have them already? Yeah, I have them. Good, bad. What's your what's your opinion? Uh, super good. I think so. Uh, the board the the boards are the biggest change because okay. the boards have lethal hexes. Ooh, lethal hexes are if you move if you move into them or through them for any reason you take a point of damage. Okay, so like you're it's within your. Your, your purview to move people into those hexes. That... If you push them in with an attack, if you move them with a ploy, no matter what, they take a point of damage. Nice. So I am going to play the Magor stall list, and I'm going to use the side that has three damage hexes, and I'm switching all of my combat ploys into push ploys. So if anyone tries to get next to me, I'm going to push them into the, he- the tiles to do damage to them and then kill them in one attack. Nice. Uh, especially because you can do things like, say, charge with Magor. Uh, hit a model, push him into the damage t- damage tile. He takes a point of damage, right? Then uh, you use a push ploy to uh, push him out of it, and then you use a push ploy to pull him back into it. <laughs> he takes another point of damage. Oh, that's, uh, a, that's a dick move, there, yeah, Steve. It's gonna be real good. There's a dick uh, move. There's also a lot of extra movement stuff that's been that's in there. There's an upgrade, which is uh, after your leader moves, you can discard the upgrade to remove his move token. Oh. So you can move or charge after that. There's a ploy, which is as long as your leader is on the board, you can pick one of your models that has a move token and remove the move token. Huh. Uh, so there's a lot of movement stuff. It's a, it's a, overall the set's not but very good. There's the, another relic. The yeah, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but the guy online, the guy on the Facebook page was like. But they didn't put down that it costs two victory points. It costs two points. So therefore, that is the worst Facebook page in the fucking universe. Like I, I like I said, when that, when that whole like when that first whole rules shallow blew, and pedantic. Yes, when that whole first rule argument blew up, I said like, when this is done, either I'm going to eat crow and agree with you that, this, that GW is just horrible at writing rules, or I'm going to use the fact that there's a fuck ton of logic backing up my argument. I'm going to post and I told you so. I'm going to leave this shitty group. So sure enough, when I was right, I posted and I told you so, and I left that shitty group. Aww. That group has love. Like to give you an idea of the fa- the the Shadespire Facebook group, there are there are card. They'll post a picture of a card that says "Draw two power cards," and they'll be like, "How many cards do I draw?" <laughs> That's the kind of level of questions you get on that Facebook group. It is the worst Facebook group I've ever seen for any game in my life. Okay, for games, I was gonna say like I'm sure there's some like oh, there's definitely worse Facebook groups. Yeah, there's probably some Nambla but, group, but you know. specifically for games, like. That that is like the worst. I've never seen a a worse set. And and but this this actually goes to show that they're if you're doing a competitive game, 
with a competitive tight rule set, you need to have a judge. You yes. need to have a judge program or you need to have someone employed by your company to answer questions rapidly. Because le- leaving that, like, <clears throat> if there was a big tournament series, like, a, a, like, heaven forbid there was fucking cash on the line. But if there was a big tournament series going on for Shadespire and they let that question, la- like, languish in the air for these six months or however many months they did, that's totally unacceptable. Like, you can't have that and have a competitive game. Mm. Um, so, like, that's, that's, that's a key. Like, you need to have... You need to have a, a either either official judges or employees that work for you ready to answer questions. I that I, I agree with that any time any time of tournaments. So. Yeah, like that's just the way you need to have it. Uh, not not thankfully the uh, the little rules pack that explained lethal hexes and stuff. They they had they answered a bunch of questions that you could have mm-hmm. on it. They're getting much better at writing their rules. Yeah. Lethal hex. If you go into the lethal hex for whatever reason, you take a point of damage. Frequently asked questions. If I move into this hex, do I take damage? Well, one of the yes. one of the one of the important <laughs> questions that like came up was like it, this, it says specifically this damage is not considered part of the attack. If you push him, so oh, if I push I see. you. That if I push you and don't kill you, and then push you into the lethal hex and kill you, my attack didn't kill you. The lethal hex killed you. Ah, okay. So it very importantly put that on there. So like that 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 kind of because thing. there are things that if like if you kill someone, right? If I kill because if I killed you with an attack, I could play. I could score a. Uh, there's possibly I could score an objective or something. Yes. But I didn't kill you with an attack. The lethal hex killed you. I do get the glory for you dying because any time a model dies, your opponent gets a glory, um, which is played out in the world and people people argued that for a long time They're like well i don't think so if he got killed by and it's like no if you're playing a two-player game when one of your models dies you give the opponent a glory the only time that a glory would not be awarded for a model dying is in multiplayer that's the only time because if you kill one of your own models in like if you kill one of your own models in 1v1 the other guy gets a glory if it's if it's a three-way or four way. If you kill one of your yeah. own models, no one gets the glory. Now we're talking because there's no fair way to allocate the glory. I can't wait till they have a Slanesh war band so you can play a three way with yeah. itself. Yeah, wouldn't it, wouldn't it just be a three way when you put it down? <laughs> I wonder if I could like 3D print some like giant penises to put onto oh, you know erect get, phalluses. Get, get the hexes. Just get 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 some wood hexes. To make your terrain and just print 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 the dildos. No no no. no. I want on um, for whatever models. I just want to put oh. like big. Penises on Oh, them. nah. I want giant... You got to do giant terrain dildos. Do some slanish terrain. You think I could sell those SDLs? Oh, yeah. Giant terrain dildos? Oh, yeah. For sure. You think someone would buy that? Do, do, do big dicks with <laughs> chaos stars on them? Oh, yeah. People would buy the, them. Um, <laughs> People would definitely buy them. That's one. The, that's actually something with 3D printing that I, 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 could, I could talk about is that there is... You either get everything free or, like, you pay for, like, high-end premium stuff that's nice. Like, printable scenery... You see them at conventions and everything like that. Their shit's nice. Like, and you're paying $10 for that print. It's worth paying $10 for that print. It's a beautiful fucking model. There are some people out there charging money for their, their STLs that are awful. And it's like, I'd pay a buck for that. And they're charging like $15 for that print. I'm like, that that print is, is not <laughs> worth $15. Like, I could literally go on, on Thingiverse or Yegi and get that exact same print for free. From some other place or some some person who's doing it free. All of that, like the 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 dungeon stuff, that's all on there. Yeah, like you can literally get all everything that's in um, what's what's that company? Um, Dwarven Forge. Yeah, yeah. You can get all that shit online for absolutely free for your three D printer. But not painted by the Dwarven Forge team. No, it's not painted by the Dwarven Forge team. But it, you're, you're there's actually there's a do- I don't know if it's still on there. I, but it's it's there's a, a Netflix it's a, documentary. That's a great documentary. It is really good. That guy is. A mess, a yes. human mess. Yes, absolutely. He, but you know what? He's exactly how I anticipated him to be. <laughs> he pretty much <laughs> is. Um, I actually asked Tim because Tim was in New York around the same time that he was getting active in the scene. I was like, "Did you ever know him?" He goes, "No, but he had a reputation." <laughs> <laughs> dude was dude like he was at uh when he was at Gary- looks like we made it <laughs> when he got to Gary Con and he was like trashed five minutes into it. I'm like yeah. that guy's an alcoholic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, he definitely seems to be an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, the um, you can get all that the Dwarven Forge stuff online, and it's all free, and it looks great, and it doesn't take that long to print. I mean, granted, it'll still take like an hour to print <laughs> in one little tile, but you got to just get used to the the printing times. So I got Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls that came in. Oh yeah, yeah, is that, that's an RPG, right? It is. Yeah, it's a good. It's, uh, the the world's second oldest RPG it came out in 1975. Ooh, uh, I really like it. 
I, I think it the this is the current version. I think it's a really good system. It's crunchy though, right? It's not. It's the opposite. Oh really? So it's it was the it was the soft answer to the D and D crunch. Ah, uh, so it's a little more RPG. It's way it's more RPG ish. It's it's way more on the RPG than an RP than the G. Yes, because it's got uh, the way it does fights are uh, it's side versus side. So it's the it's like a it's like a middle finger to simulationist combat. Oh. So the the party determines what they're going to do in the fight, and they roll whatever dice they're rolling. They add their number together. The monsters do whatever they're doing. Roll their dice. Add their number together. You compare the totals. Higher number wins the round. Loser takes the difference in damage. Split up as they see fit amongst their team. Oh, interesting. So, uh, like that's really that's that's I think that's be a lot. Granted, there's a lot more planning in what you're going to do at that point, but it shouldn't be that bad. The only problem I would see in that would be people like pre-planning combos. No, there's no combos. Cause when no, you... what I'm saying, combos of attacks between the players. Not like, I'm going to do this somersault that gives me this feat and blah, blah, blah. Oh. I'm saying like people like playing like, well, if you make this attack and I make this attack and you no, make no, that it's, attack. It's all simultaneous and you you either attack or you do something. Well, and attack yeah. is, there's no difference. So like if you, if you have your sword, you're rolling 3d6 plus 10. And then this guy's axe, he's 2d6 plus 5. Like you just roll your number. There is no, there is no gamifying it. It's oh. not possible. Oh. Uh, if you aren't doing an attack and you're doing something anything else you do in the game is a saving throw interesting uh and it's a saving throw based on difficulty uh pl- it's your stat plus 2d6 so like take a strength saving throw difficulty 20 you roll 2d6 plus your strength you need to meet a 20 or higher the only problem with playing this game i can see is finding a dm who is a 50 year old guy with a big white beard and suspenders who every time you say, like, I'm going to do this, he goes, he takes off his glasses and goes, ah, <laughs> well. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> like, that, that would, that's the guy that would be running that game. Hopefully I could be that guy. Yes. Someday you will be the, you will be the George R.R. R. Martin guy. Ah, I see. <laughs> what well. a daring plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Like, uh, you know, well, that's and you're the, just like, Jerry, come on, let's just get to the combat. <laughs> uh, but the, the thing that's nice is uh, with with the way that with the way the system works is so if you're just going to fight with your weapons, you just roll your dice. But if you're going to do something, it becomes a saving throw. So say you're fighting in a bar. Right. And you're like, I want to jump behind the bar and set the bar on fire. Right. I'm like, OK, so that'll be a dex uh, do a dex saving throw. So you do your dex saving throw. I'm like, you set the bar on fire. Like that's that's how that works. Like it's it's a very fast and loose, simple like system because the, the idea is like it's just, it's to get you to fucking play like yeah. get the game going that sounds like it'd be a good system for like a podcast oh for sure an actual play oh it'd be great for an actual that play. that sounds and like then, it'd be great for an actual play yeah. as opposed to like watching an actual play of dungeons and dragons which i was watching the other day and i was like holy fuck actual plays of dungeons and dragons are the actual worst they're fucking no pathfinder is worse same difference yeah. at, at, at three five if it's if it's if it's a three if it's a map based if it's a map based game it's probably a terrible actual play. The, the only exception might be Star Trek, simply because Star Trek combat is so fucking fast. Because it's, it's super tactical, but it's also super dangerous because it's Star Trek. So if you get hit with a phaser, you get hit with a phaser, <laughs> which means you go down. What actually happens when you get hit with a phaser? You mean like in the game? Is it, or is it in like, lore? like well, like what is it? Is it like a laser? Is it like it, it, a fa- it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a molecular disruptor. Okay. It disrupts it disrupts you at the molecular level. So stun it like sends your body into like a like a shock and you you pass out. Yeah. Uh, and then of course kill it disintegrates you. Yeah, like that's that's what it is. That's that's what a phaser is. It's a burst of concentrated energy that disrupts you at a molecular level. Remember when we had the idea for doing the? Uh... And that's why I can, that's why I can interact with buildings and doors and stuff because it it's, it just blows them. That's why it just blows those things up because it, it hits them. It stimulates their molecules or whatever, and they just pop. Yeah. Remember when we wanted to do the Star Trek guys playing Dungeons and Dragons yes. RPG? That would be great. <laughs> I hit them with my axe. You don't have the initiative, Worf. <laughs> and you're initiative a... nothing. I hit them with my axe. <laughs> and you're a bard. <laughs> Why am I a bard? Jordy! <laughs> and Data going like, judging by your play style, I thought that Barbara... <laughs> Data would be the worst. He'd be like, you have a 33% probability of doing this. You should apply a different strategy and use this this technique instead. It would, raise your, it would elevate your success chances to 64%. <laughs> it's like, fucking Data, you rules lawyer. <laughs> I use my axe. Yeah. I hit them with my axe. <laughs> Where did you get the axe from? You don't have an axe. I stole it from my foe. <laughs> I took it as spoils of conquering. <laughs> and spoils of war. And Riker's like, 
Are there any attractive barmaids? <laughs> you, I sleep with the barmaid. What do I roll? Jean-Luc, what do I roll to sleep with the barmaid? Well, you're an avian, so you technically don't have a penis. No! Why am I an avian? <laughs> you have a cloaca, or whatever that's called. F- cloaca. Cloaca. Fine, well, what do I roll to disperse on the, on the, on the, on the, on the barmaid? <laughs> Oh, uh, that'd be good times. Good yeah. times. All right. Do we have anything else? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, go to planetarbitrary.com for your planetary needs. Planet Arbitrary is back up and running, folks. Oh, it's been re- it's been restored. It has been restored. It's um, actually the podcast probably won't go up on there because we're still working on the actual like admin p- portion of the site. <laughs> that's uh, that's but the actual site is up and running again. Um, saving the day, <laughs> saving the day. Do you ever see the Key and Peele sketch where they do the Ray Parker Jr.? No. He sings songs about all of the different eighties, nineties uh, movies. Like he does a uh, Lawnmower Man. He's like Lawnmower Man. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, you have to see this. Um, <laughs> you could uh, you can follow us on Facebook backslash Planet uh, fa- <laughs> backslash Game Classy Podcast. Um, memes, memes, and and Steve posting about stuff. On occasion, stuff so, that he gets angry about generally. Sometimes I'll put on Metal Monday and Techno Thursday. Yeah, and if you're, it's the best way to get a hold of us. So if you you ever you do have something you want us to talk about on the podcast, or you just want to stop by and say hi, the Facebook page is the best thing. Or tell us that one of our game designers is a neo Nazi. That's that's fine too. Yes. <laughs> um, possible. Possible. Uh, we're not there. We're not. We're not a confirmed yet. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram. It is uh, Game Classy Joe. You can follow Steve on Instagram at uh, uh, Command Throw. Yeah, Command Throw. You can follow him at Twitter at I'm Command Throw. And you can follow me at, at Planet Arbitrary. Uh, you could. The best way you can help with the podcast is like, comment, subscribe on iTunes. You can also like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube site. But I don't know why you do that. Actually, I think I got a D. Uh, a C. I got. I got those DMC. A yeah, yeah, yeah. things just like every other episode just oh, because yeah. of like our singing or whatever it's, it's automated way, it's just copyright trolls and shit too it's just speaking of our singing which um, is stupid because you don't you those those videos aren't monetized yeah um the i was watching the ducktales cartoon which i keep telling you you got to watch the new ducktales cartoon yeah it's so not like, on any streaming service yeah, though yeah just the disney one um gummy berry juice is in the new episode. Yeah, I know they 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 ref- they're referencing all of the Disney, Disney afternoon, afternoon stuff. stuff. Exactly. So it's awesome. I'm waiting for fucking Chippendales Rescue yeah, Rangers to show up. It has not appeared yet. Not in any way I've seen so far. But they've yeah, they did a uh, Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the cracks, but, but these two gum shoes are picking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. When you need help, just call Chip 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 and Rescue Rangers Chip 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 and Dale when there's danger. Oh man, it's so good. Um, but yeah, they it was like in the episode itself because they were explaining like uh why Scrooge and Mrs. Beasley, you know, like how they knew each other and everything like that. Mrs. Beakley, not Mrs. Beakley. Mrs. Mm. Beakley's thick in that show. She's thick. She's mm. thick with two C's. I like, I like, because in the old one, she was just like, oh, Mr. McDonald. Yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. yeah, she was just, she, she was the, the housekeeper. Yeah, yeah, she was like a silly, in like, this one, she's silly, like, like pro- posh British nanny. Yeah, in this one, she's like, 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 um, she's like, muscle. She's like Alfred. Yeah, and like, she's and, Alfred. Yeah, she, she's, they rolled, they rolled, new Alfred. New yeah. Alfred. And yeah. like, they, well, because they got rid of his butler. Yeah, because his butler's a ghost. Uh, Mr. Beagle. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Beagle's a ghost. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He came back because they accidentally summoned a ghost and they summoned him. And so he's like a poltergeist in the house. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. But Miss, Mrs. Beakley is, uh, like, hardcore, like, a uh, secret agent. Yeah, and everything she's like, like she's muscle. Yeah. But in that episode, they're like, they're, they're making gummy berry juice. Um, uh, what did she say? It's like you'll be bouncing here and there and everywhere. <laughs> and I was like, ah! I was really excited. My daughter was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Is it to gum to gum berries? It's the juice to bounce to the gummies. They drink it to gummies." Yeah, there was a couple of like when they did Darkwing Duck, I was so excited because it was like it wasn't even like updated. It was the exact same old Darkwing Duck with all the old voices. I was like, Megavolt. I like my heart. I just felt it. It was right a great there. Super Nintendo game as well. It was all those Disney afternoon games were they great. Were, they were Capcom. They were they <clears> weren't <throat> in Super Nintendo. They were all Nintendo. Yes, yeah, a Nintendo. It was no, a you Nintendo said game. Super Nintendo. Did I, oh, there was no Darkwing Duck on Super no, Nintendo. No, no, there was none of those games were on Super Nintendo. Uh, the the best Disney game on Super Nintendo was Aladdin. Yes. Uh, it was made by I think Cap- the Genesis version was better though. Uh, that's the big, people remember the Genesis version more because there was a sword. But as far as a game goes, uh, yeah, the definitely. Super Nintendo version was better. It also had better music. But yeah. but the Genesis version was also an excellent game. It's like comparing a nine and a nine point five. In yeah, my the uh, 
Uh, I do remember that the 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 tailspin game was not so good for the Nintendo. It was a shmup. A it was shmup. A shmup. Yeah, it was it was kind of hard, but it was okay. But the, all of those games were made by Capcom. What's a shmup. Uh, shoot 'em up. Oh. So like a uh, Gradius or uh, yeah. R type. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. A, yeah, but the uh, I remember the Ducktales one. Well, the Ducktales one is fantastic. And there was a Ducktales two. Yeah, super rare, worth a lot of money. Ducktales. The original Ducktales was an amazing game. Yeah. And uh, Chippendales few... Rescue Rangers was really good. Yeah. And there's also Chippendales two, also super rare and expensive. Yeah, I've seen. I saw. I've seen a, a couple speed runs on the Chippendale. Uh, the final boss of that game is Fat Cat. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, what was it? Oh, the DMCA ticket. Okay. Um, you can like our uh, sister podcast, which is the uh, Play On Podcast, where Steve and Pat talk about video games. Uh, what you talking about lately, Steve? Well, the last episode was a deconstructing daycare takeover. I wasn't. Oh on yeah, because you were doing. They did uh, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, we were on. Uh, we were. We were on. We were playing D and D at the at the at that time. Uh, our D and D our D and D thing was rescheduled, and Pat was like last second, like, "Hey, I want to do the podcast this day," and it's like, "Uh, no." <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he did. Uh, they did Super Mario Brothers for deconstructing daycare, which is all about children's TV. Mm. Look through the eyes of an adult uh, with Super Mario. I'm Luke Abumbu Albano. I'm gonna play. I got rubber bands in my ears. Remember, if you do drugs, you'll go to hell and you'll die. And die. <laughs> 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 As he's snorting coke off of Cindy Lauper's ass. Um, I mean, to be fair, who wouldn't snort coke off of 80s Cindy Lauper's ass? I mean, I, I'd, snort, I'd snort coke off of Captain Lou Albano's ass. Yeah, that's fair. Because <laughs> that's a great story. It's like, you know... For I, sure. Oh, you no, know, it's like, know, hey... I, I did coke off it's Captain like, hey, Lou's yeah, ass. Yeah, Captain Lou Albano. Cool. That, that guy's cool. He was Mario, right? Like, yeah, you want to hear a story about him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a great story Yeah, I got a good story about Captain Lou Albano for you. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, did I get, am I missing anything? I think, oh, and uh, Weeb Town, which is uh, yes, yeah. Weeb Town, which is on which is on always indefinite hiatus, <laughs> always an indefinite hiatus. Um, so, Steve, uh, until the next time, uh, Super Mario, do do do. Not a significant do, 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 source do, do, of do, calories do, do, from do, fat, do. saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. <laughs> Game classy. <laughs>